start. Hello friends, this is Dr. Ishwarya Kaushik. I'm your original guru for conservative dentistry, endodontics and dental materials and today we are going to discuss the Rajasthan medical officer um, question paper. Uh, this video pertains to dental materials. Uh, a few questions definitely yes came in the paper. Um, I would say the level of difficulty was not that high, not that great. Most of them were repeats. So again, um, the success in this kind of a paper relies on your accuracy, how well you have revised and how many times you have revised, right? So we'll quickly go through the questions. Chromium is added to, first question, chromium is added to stainless steel as it provides, right? So in stainless steel, basically, whenever we talk of steel, we're talking of iron, some amount of carbon is there, right? As far as chromium is concerned, it is added in anywhere between 12% to 30%. And what does it provide? It provides a passivating layer of chromium oxide, right? So valency of chromium is 3, so chromium twice, oxygen thrice, right? And this basically provides uh, a passivating layer on the surface of the steel which prevents oxidation, in other words, corrosion of other important components like our iron, right? So basically the idea is that it provides corrosion resistance. So D is the answer here. In amalgam alloy which acts as oxygen scavenger. Again, many a times, in fact, every time I discuss amalgams, we always discuss about the components and one of the important components is zinc. What is the role of zinc? Zinc, um, of course, it, in, it helps in improving the handling properties. It helps, it, in general, it is, it is shown that zinc containing amalgams usually survive longer periods. Their longevity is high. Apart from that, a very important reason why zinc is added is that it serves as the sacrificial anode. And what do we mean by this, guys? Sacrificial anode, its electrode potential is much less than the other components of the amalgam alloy. So what does an amalgam alloy have? Silver, some amount of tin, copper, right? And zinc. Now, when I say it acts as a sacrificial anode, basically what I imply is that its electrode potential, its electrode potential is lower than the other important components, which implies that in case of corrosion or, or oxidation, right, is going to sacrifice itself first before others. Why? Because its electrode potential is around minus 0 0.76 millivolt, which is lesser than silver tin copper, right? And hence, it would itself undergo oxidation, acting as the oxygen scavenger and uh, preventing the corrosion of other important components, right? So, zinc is the answer here. Oxygen scavenger or the sacrificial anode, right? So zinc is the answer here. Now this question, third question, porosity due to gas inclusion. So one important term is gas inclusion during raw rapid solidification of molten alloy is. Now guys, um, the moment you see the term gas inclusion, right, you have to go to the classification of trapped gases, right? You all know, again, I would always say that I always discuss porosity in both my routine lectures, recordings, as well as rapid revision. So porosity is basically due to two problems. One is during problems due to solidification, solidification problems or solidification defects, right? So in that you would have localized shrinkage porosity, you will have micro porosity, and you will have sunk back porosity, or also known as hot spot porosity, right? The other is due to trapped gases, and this is the propensity of, you know, molten alloy to, you know, incorporate gases during melting, 
and then when they solidify, right, when they're coming back to the room temperature, they're going to evolve these absorbed gases leading to porosity. And that is gas inclusion and pinhole. More or less the same, just that in pinhole, as the word suggests, the size of the pores is smaller as compared to gas inclusion, in which the size of the pores is relatively larger. And then you have subsurface porosity, right? And you have the back pressure porosity, right? That is, that is the entire story of porosity. Again, in detail, I'm not going because that is what we discuss in our routine lectures. So guys, the moment you see um, gas inclusion term, right? You have to look for the options of either gas inclusion porosity or, mic or pinhole porosity, right? In this, out of these two, only pinhole is given, so the answer is pinhole. I'll again uh, refer to one more thing, rapid solidification. Now, this term rapid solidification is creating some level of confusion in your minds and, rapid, and, and rightly so. You know why? Um, rapid solidification is a term which is also used when we discuss Microporosity. And what is that? Microporosity, if you see the definition in Phillips, is uh, it writes that microporosity is a special type of localized shrinkage porosity in which, due to rapid solidification, due to rapid solidification, the um, bubbles or air, you know, the bubbles that are there, uh, air bubbles, they uh, fail to segregate into the liquid pool. Right, and as I said, rapid solidification word is used in microporosity also. When I when I say the definition, right, that was creating some level of confusion due to which some students were like, "Sir, why not microporosity?" But as I said, the term gas inclusion gives away the answer. It's either pinhole or it's gas inclusion, right? So our answer here, no doubt, remains pinhole porosity there's no doubt about this right guys pinhole porosity is the answer right next hypersensitivity reaction like contact dermatitis now this is i will star mark this this was a new question um new question in the sense not a repeat directly taken from your phillips you see the chapter of impression materials in phillips there are two tables that are given that are related to cytotoxicity. Cytotoxicity. Now, the most cytotoxic, the most cytotoxic material, in other words, the least biocompatible impression material is polyether. And the least cytotoxic material or in other words most biocompatible impression material is polysulfide guys that's one thing i saw the answer here in this same discussion in your textbook phillips where they have given you two graphs in which they're telling you about the cytotoxicity potential and the uh, the relative cytotoxicity in which the, the least cytotoxic is polysulfide, the most cytotoxic is polyether. They've also written one line in the description that there are reports from dental assistants who have suffered from contact dermatitis from the catalyst of polyether. So it's a direct pick from your textbook, but not a repeat. So polyether is the answer, guys right so yes good quality question in the in terms of the fact that there's no ambiguity no controversy new question straight taken from your good textbook that is your phillips so i would rate this question as a thumbs up good question and uh, of course questions like these people who solve them who've been studying hard who've always studied standard textbooks they always have an edge in getting a good rank anyways so I'll just revise this hypersensitivity reaction like contact dermatitis. The answer is polyether. The main difference between dental stone and dental plaster, guys, this is also a direct pick uh, from your Phillips. The first page only tells you about the fact that the uh, size 
of the you know as you go from stone plaster to stone the size becomes finer more equiaxed so the structure is less porous it's more dense so it's basically the shape and size of the particles no no doubt about this no ambiguity answer is c shape and size of the particles ductility represents again i always do this when i'm doing physical and mechanical properties lecture you see your stress versus strain curve your straight line portion ends at the proportional limit or the elastic limit now that's more or less synonymous however the examiners have been smart enough in the past to differentiate between the two this is again one of a very tough and you know you can say to an extent controversial question always remember this i'm giving you this as an added knowledge here whenever you do this question revise the definition of proportional limit versus elastic limit the proportional limit is that that value of stress above which stress is no longer proportional to strain elastic limit is that value of greatest stress um at which that greatest stress at which entire elastic recovery will take place right or in other words that value of the greatest stress um below which you know or oh, your elastic recovery will take place or that value of greatest stress above which um uh, the plastic deformation starts so that's elastic limit so more or less they're the same but the definition is different so the examiner might ask you question based on this right so please remember the definition and next is um what is the value of maximum strain at the level of the proportional limit that is maximum flexibility that's another mcq right then as far as this question is concerned when you go beyond the proportional limit or the elastic limit right then you enter the zone of plastic deformation so under tensile stress if you're talking of tensile stress that is elongation whatever plastic deformation takes place before the material ultimately fractures is referred to as ductility right so percentage elongation when it is represented in terms of percentage fraction of 100 then it's ductility right so the answer is very simple answer is c percentage elongation right so i'll just repeat this ductility represents percentage elongation option c is the answer whenever you're doing this kind of an mcq always remember uh the three or four related mcqs revise them rotate them in your head that helps you in solving applied questions going into the next examination right friends so this was about dental materials um guys you know exam season is starting summers are gone a couple of months time you want to feel the pressure of i and i exam then we have need so it's like the entire cycle is repeating now guys i would just like to tell you you know all of us are studying hard but ultimately stick to your guns guys what do I, what do i mean by stick to your guns whatever belief whatever faith uh you have whatever determination you have stick to it you'll meet 10 different people um they'll tell you 10 different ways of approaching a given problem right you have to stick to your belief system right so there are always two components one is your belief system one is knowledge right subject yes try to read as much as possible try to take in whatever information your seniors people who already cracked the exam be like a absorbent you know a sponge right take in all the information listen to everybody but as far as but as far as your belief system is concerned have faith in yourself guys right stick to your guns and uh, keep studying hard right guys take care guys best wishes thank you